Hello guys, I am Shane Davis, 20 year comic book veteran. I'm here with Yan Lin, and uh, this is a video. This is a video that we've talked about a lot in our household and uh, a subject. And I was like, we well, should do a video about it. We should just get this video out there. And that is cancel culture. Cancel culture and, and the American comic book industry. You know, this last few months ago, Mark Miller was calling people out for cancel pigs because people were attacking a retailer video. You guys can go look that up. Cancel pigs was this big thing. Everybody started calling it out and then went away. And then a few months later, it seems like there was the uh, Ed Piscor situation. And it really got me looking back at just cancel culture going kind of way back to Brian Wood, right? Brian Wood being canceled. And I, and I might be misquoting Brian Wood, but he said this type of thing will continue up until somebody basically self-deletes. And I just started thinking about how long ago the whole Brian Wood situation was. Uh, Tess Fowler, you can check that out. Just do a couple of Google searches, you'll come across it. Today's climate, how many new comic creators that are have talent are even trying to work in this industry that can you can get canceled at any time? You can get dogpiled, get accused of something, and lose all your jobs, any potential jobs before anybody has a day in court before anything's cleared, before even a police report has been written, even yeah, chances are there may not even be, you haven't done anything wrong that there even would be a police report, but you're already canceled. I don't know. What do you think, Yanti? Well, I think all this kind of stuff from the way social media just allows everyone to have a voice, even those who do not or should not have a voice. With the way social media is, anyone can reach out to anybody. See, I can reach out and talk to any comic pro I want, technically, on the social media, provided they didn't block me or something like that. So it kind of puts us all on a level playing field in a way. And with that, it gives people the power to call each other out too. So think about that. Let's use an example of, like, say, T. Franklin. Every time she does not get a job she wants, what does she do? She screams and shouts on social media. She reminds people that she has all these checkboxes. And suddenly, because DC is in a big hurry to make sure that they don't look like, oh my God, we're istophobic or whatever, quick, let's give T a job. And that's what they do. So imagine you can use that to get a job. Now, what if you can use that power to do the opposite and that's cost someone a job? You see how easy it is to do that? You can scream for a job. You can also cost someone a job just to saying, hey, you know, maybe you shouldn't give that guy over there a job. He is istophobic. He did this and that to somebody. Where's the proof? Oh, I don't have the proof, but you know, I heard it down the grapevine. And you are a bad person if you don't listen to me for telling you that this person is problematic. And unfortunately, because of the way cancel culture is now, it's very easy for a whole group of people to bunch together and say to a publisher, hey, you better not platform this guy. Otherwise, we'll all go out there and badmouth you, saying that you are supporting whatever istophobic agenda they have or whatsoever. Just thinking about it through the scope of a new creator, it's like, Comics, I'll say this, for working over 20-some years at Marvel and DC Comics, like it's really a lot of years just to get to a point in comics where you're making a decent living. And even then, for especially a comic book artist, you're really trying to hustle. You're trying to do commissions at cons, as much work as you can. You're trying to square away books with uh, you know, characters or that really have a decent amount of value and original art. A lot of spinning wheels just to try to get ahead in life. And none of that, even in a normal comment market, is even guaranteed. You know, just because you're John Byrne and you're working on X-Men doesn't mean you're always going to have a job at Marvel Comics working on X-Men. Just because you're Jim Lee, maybe you can always sustain a job. But I, I mean, there's very few people that can sustain work indefinitely until retirement in the American comic book industry. And it's already kind of rough being a creative person working as a freelancer. Your taxes are higher, your health insurance. It's already rough. Now, take all that and say, that's a hard pill to swallow. I'll bite. I'm going in. I, I believe in making comics. I believe in making the best comics I can. And my job security is going to be I'll make a better comic. I'm, I'm always trying to get better so there will always be a demand. I'll be great to my fans, all of these things. Then there's cancel culture. Maybe your demographic, maybe the color of your skin isn't all that fashionable to hire anymore. Maybe you're hard to uh, virtue signal off as a, as a comic creator. Although that used to wasn't a thing, but today, like maybe there's a, there's a month of the year that's celebrating a certain demographic and you're not it. You know, now you're out of work. Okay. Maybe just in general, you just aren't 
accepted by the changing community, which is comics. All right. Like you're there waiting basically to get canceled. And what, what you end up with is this scenario of a career that's kind of like high risk, low reward. As much as drawing a book at Marvel and DC of your favorite comic book character is highly rewarding, it is just that, highly rewarding for that moment. But trying to build a career out of that and something that you can lean on and pay a mortgage and feed a family and things like that, not so great. Um, And that's before cancel culture. Add cancel culture to it, now it's not even you getting canceled. It's potentially your child, potentially your wife. See, cancel culture doesn't just affect a person getting canceled. It actually affects their family. It puts creators in a really bad spot, I think. And I actually think there's less and less talented comic artists, if I had to be honest. I see less and less new artists that have great drawing skills, great storytelling skills, craftsmanship in the American comic book industry. And I don't think new artists quit being made. I actually think there's great artists out there they're just not getting in the comics. You'd have to be crazy to work so many years to try to get a steady series or a decent page rate to turn around and just have that wipe off that be, uh, be obliterated off the map because somebody accused you or you tried hitting on a girl at a comic con or you just tried hitting on a girl period anywhere with social media. It, it doesn't even matter if they're even related to comics. But what I do see and and Again, I'm going to try to word this correctly. I see a lot of untalented people entering the comic book field at the same time. And that's very strange. Why am I seeing a lot of people with portfolios and and artwork that really doesn't look like something I would pay money for um, filling up comics as less and less talented people are filling up comics? And I think about that. And I, I, I truly do. And I wonder if I started doing a deep dive on these creatives, sexualities, identities, I guess, or social media or what click they're in in social media or what they're retweeting, how much that has an effect on them getting in the comics. And that's where the industry, I think this, whether people acknowledge it or not, is kind of a breaking point of the American comic book industry. And we're seeing manga go up as we go down. Okay, well, people don't like that. We all talk about it year after year after year. But nobody's doing anything different to change that. Nobody's saying, like, we need to start making books that are built off of um, a quality product. as and, and not just one month out of the year, but 12 months out of the year, as many books as we can. Nobody's changing hiring practices despite the declining sales year after year. And uh, it's the craziest thing I've seen, actually. Rather, though, you'll see Heidi McDonald in the beat just say, this is the new norm. It's like, no, it's not. This is being driven to a destination and uh, to service people, whether or not the industry can sustain, it's about servicing a certain type of people. If you guys will hit like, subscribe, ring the bell for notification, let us know what you think about this. Also, I want to let you guys know, extend level up is up and funding. We will be taking this down fairly soon. Our next book to go to print from Nine Lives Comics and Glorious Rex 2 is at the printer right now. So if you guys will, go check this campaign out. I'll leave you guys with a trailer for this smash hit book, and we'll catch you guys again with another video. I dream. I dream of a world carefully crafted, beautifully flawed. This is Accent. In this game of life, there is one thing that determines a victor. A player's ability to grow. A player's ability to evolve. A player's ability to survive. My name is Dog. Choose to play. Choose to upgrade. Choose to level up. Choose to accept.